It's totally fine. I have a lot more stories. That you do. Yeah. <laughs> that you do. Guilty as charged <laughs> with the stories. Hey, everybody. Chris Whiting, and this is I've Got Something to Say. This edition is titled, Well, Curses. There's a small Walgreens on the corporate campus where I work. It's not as big as a regular Walgreens. There's no minute clinic, and the photography section is woefully not robust. But other than that, chances are good they have most everything you might need during a typical work day. Need a pen for your 11.30 lunch meeting? They got it. How about a condom for your 4 o'clock jaunt to the no-tell motel? Well, they got that too. Seriously, they do. But I mean, who buys condoms at the work Walgreens? Anyway, I was there the other day, searching for neither a pen nor a prophylactic. I was craving some soy wasabi-flavored almonds. Thanks, Blue Diamond. They were out, but the clerk suggested I try the wasabi snack mix, except another time, because they were out of that too. As I grabbed a Tabasco-flavored Slim Jim, the clerk told me the wasabi snack mix reminded him of living in Japan. This wasn't a throwaway line. I could tell from his delivery that he was dying for me to ask him about living in Japan. I didn't want to. How could a story about going from living in an exotic country to wearing a Walgreens vest at the corporate campus store be anything other than a massive downer? I took my meat stick to the counter. Yeah, man, you have to try the wasabi snack mix. It's so good. Like I said, it reminds me so much of living in Japan. Well, damn, I can only be so rude. So against my better judgment, I bit. So you lived in Japan, I said. Fuck yeah, came the response. Fucking awesome. Oh, wow. You seem emphatic about that, I retorted. He launched into a colorful description of his five years there. Apparently, Japan is fucking beautiful. And if you go, you have to hit the aquarium in Okinawa. It's fucking huge, I'm told. No, seriously, dude. Fucking huge. It's not that I'm a prude when it comes to language at this point in my life. I was just a little surprised to hear an onslaught of F-bombs vocalized so loudly in a public retail store. From the clerk, no less. I'm not trying to be a hypocrite. I mean, if it's a curse word, I say it. I just try to pay attention to the audience and the setting. But this wasn't always the case. There was a time when I wouldn't dare utter a curse word. My distorted view of religion as a youngster was that if I did anything wrong, the gig was up for me. My sinning behind would split the gates of the underworld wide open. When I got shushed by my teacher in kindergarten, I came home and told my mom I figured I was going to hell for getting in trouble. Although I'm sure I used another word. I mean, saying hell on top of getting shushed? That much sinning in one day, and I was certainly on the fast track to being the next Idi Amin. My parents didn't curse, so I wasn't exposed to it at home. But I had two sets of grandparents. One set didn't curse at all, at least around me. The other set did curse, but what I would call appropriate cursing. They were PG-13 cursers, and not all the time. It's not like they worked at Walgreens, after all. I only heard Granddad say the F word one time, and it was after he creamed his head on the door jam to the side porch, so it seemed appropriate. Mostly, he just said shit. My Mimi, his wife, was the same. She actually seemed troubled that I didn't curse, and told me when I was upset I'd feel better if I just said, shit damn hell. That's what she'd do when she was mad at her parents as a kid. She'd go sit under the porch stairs and say, shit damn hell. It worked for her, why wouldn't it work for me? Finally, when I was in high school, I determined my religious guilt was not serving me well, so I decided I'd allow myself one curse word. After some deliberation, I landed on damn. After all, I'd heard Florida Evans say it three times in a row after James died on Good Times, so it was at least marginally mainstream. Plus, it was almost as versatile as the F word. I could say, damn, or damn it, I don't give a damn, or damn, she looks good. Turns out, though, despite my good intentions and the flexibility of damn, it was merely a gateway word that led me to explore the tapestries of profanity that could be woven when one embraced the entirety of the potty mouth lexicon. So, fast forward many years later. It's 2009, and my grandpa Harvey, the non-cussing grandpa, is my last living grandparent. 
He's 101 years old, a few months from passing, and I'm visiting him in the nursing home. Harvey and I are having a nice chat when he abruptly says, <clears throat> Chris, I'm sorry, I think you have to go. I need to get to the restroom now. I may have been 60 years his younger, but I know the urgency he felt. I'd pop my cherry on adults' pants pooping a few years prior to this visit. I immediately stood at the same time as him. Me, racing for the hallway, as quickly as he was racing to the door to his bathroom. As I stepped outside his room, I turned to close the door behind me. As it was closing, I heard the rumblings of bowels that would not be denied. This was followed by a panicked, yet resigned, God damn. I hope Grandpa made it without too much of a mess to clean up. I really do. But I also hope he knows he made the five-year-old Chris, the one who was scared to death he was going to hell for getting shushed at school, feel so much better about his decision to broaden his vocabulary. I really fucking do. So, that's been another episode of I've Got Something to Say. I'm Chris Whiting. As always, special thanks to KCTK Radio for producing this podcast and my good buddy Paul for making it all happen. If you've got anything you'd like to relay to me, you can reach me via email at cwhiting11 at gmail.com. Until next time, my friends. 